Were the dinosaurs killed by an asteroid impact or volcanic activity? You might think that it was definitely the asteroid impact. I mean, that's pretty much all you hear about when you hear about the dinosaur extinction is this impact. However, this topic has actually been debated in the scientific community for a long time because there was also suspiciously a lot of volcanic activity going on at this time that may or may not have contributed to these extinctions. But that's what we'll be talking about and trying to answer in this video. Hello, my name is Rachel, and I am currently one of GSA's Science Communication Fellows, which means that I'll be popping on here on the Geo Society channel a little bit more this year to share a lot of the work being published in their journals, the work being presented at their annual meeting, and that's what you're watching right now. I also have my own channel called Geo Girl, where I share a lot of geoscience content as well, so I will link that in the description box of this video if you're interested in checking it out. And with that, we'll get back to today's conversation. If you haven't seen the part one to this video on my channel, Geo Girl, that is where I go over kind of the background regarding the KPG extinction event, this, this event that took out the non-avian dinosaurs, where we talk about the timing of this event. It is one of the big five mass extinctions in the Phanerozoic Eon. It is actually the most recent one happening around 66 million years ago. The effects of the event, it caused massive devastation to both marine and terrestrial life, most notably, of course, the non-avian dinosaurs, and its cause, which tends to be simplified into asteroid impact. But it turns out there's a lot more complexities that go along with this. And in that part one video, I talked a lot about the things that the asteroid impact caused in terms of climatic and environmental changes. But in this video, we're going to talk about a potential missing link to this story. That is volcanoes. So at this time, it's clear and it's not debated that there was massive volcanism occurring in what we now call the Deccan Traps of Peninsular India. And you can see this is not a small region. This is a large scale, large Igneous province of volcanism that was erupting at this time 66-ish million years ago. But whether this volcanic activity actually played a role in the mass extinction event remains highly debated. Some think that this rapid increase in volcanic activity contributed to the mass extinctions at the time. Well, others think it did happen, but was unrelated to the asteroid impact and didn't really affect life much. And others think that the impact may have actually caused the increase in volcanic activity, even though the impact was on the other side of the world than the volcanism. Again, at this time in the Cretaceous 66 million years ago, India had not yet smashed into Asia yet. So it was down here and uh, the impact took place way over here near North America. <laughs> so which of these scenarios is the right one? What role did the volcanism play, if any, in this event? Well, the third scenario we talked about is unlikely. That is, it's unlikely that the impact caused the volcanic activity since the eruptions seemingly began around 500 to 300,000 years before the impact. But we've seen, and I've talked about in previous videos on my channel, how many dinosaur species were declining leading up to the KPG impact. And this made the devastation caused by the impact even more devastating to the life at the time because a lot of those organisms were already declining. So then when the impact hit and all those rapid climate changes occurred and caused those mass extinctions, they were kind of already vulnerable. And so this brings up the question, did the Deccan volcanism contribute to these declines and thus contribute to the mass extinction overall? This brings me to the main topic of this video, which is a new 2024 paper that was just published in GSA Bulletin titled Deep Marine Records of Decontrap Volcanism Before the Cretaceous Paleogene KPG Mass Extinction, which provides new insight regarding this question of what role did the volcanism play in the event. The authors of this paper used mercury concentrations and osmium isotopes in the rock record to understand whether Deccan volcanism was linked to the KPG extinctions. So in terms of methods, why exactly did they go for using mercury and osmium isotopes specifically? 
Well, mercury spikes in the rock record are often linked to volcanic activity, as volcanism releases mercury to the atmosphere. It's the major source of mercury to the atmosphere. And in terms of osmium, volcanic rocks have very distinct osmium isotope signatures compared to other rock types. So these can be used to detect volcanic contributions to sediments. And the combined mercury and osmium data used in this study helps to determine when the volcanism and the climate changes at this time occurred relative to the extinctions and their intensity and potentially what role they might have played. So what are the major findings from this study? Well, they showed that the consistent osmium isotope record across different sites show clear signals of decontract volcanism leading up to the KPG boundary. We see a shift in osmium isotopes about 300,000 years before the KPG extinction event, which they think indicates potentially the first pulse in decon volcanism. So this down step here, we've got osmium isotopes going pretty consistently, pretty much even, and then down step in osmium isotopes, then even again, and then big down step, which we'll talk about in a second. But this first down step in osmium isotopes and potential pulse and decon volcanism coincides with a warming event in the late Maastrichtian age. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Kind of this 300,000 year before KPG extinction event timeframe. So warming coincides with potential pulse of volcanism. This makes sense. Volcanism releases greenhouse gases, specifically this type of volcanism that the decon traps represent, and that caused warming, which is recorded in the oxygen isotopes at the time, makes sense. Then we see again another osmium isotope step right at the KPG boundary. So essentially the summary of events here that this paper shows in this figure is that there was likely a first pulse of decon volcanism around 300,000 years before the KPG boundary. Then this drove this decreasing trend in the osmium isotopes here around 300 to 200,000 years before the boundary. And then there was a stable period and then another pulse of volcanism followed by a steep drop in osmium isotopes. This is more pronounced though due to the impact. So apparently the impact also caused this osmium isotope signature, signature or contributed to it. However, they say in the paper that separate geochemical lines of evidence indicate that there was likely another pulse of volcanism around here that also contributed to this down step in os osmium isotopes. And then there was potentially a post-impact pulse in the decon trap volcanism after the impact, which again, it's still controversial whether that was caused by the impact. I think people lead toward not, but this paper didn't really get into that much. They focused mainly on what happened leading up to the impact. So what about their findings with regards to mercury? Does it back up any of their interpretations of the osmium record? Well, the mercury record didn't show very consistent global patterns. Unlike the osmium isotopes, which they could replicate over and over again at different sites and see the same steps and trends in the isotopes, the mercury was much more variable, which to them seems to indicate, at least with regards to this specific event, that mercury records in the deep marine sediments at this time are not a reliable indicator, at least global indicator of volcanism, potentially local indicators of volcanism, but obviously that would vary depending on local conditions at the time. And then their third major finding is with regards to climate. How this volcanic activity affected climate at this time and potentially the extinction. So the study showed that the Deacon traps emitted large amounts of carbon dioxide causing global warming, but they also enhanced global continental weathering rates. And I've talked many times on my channel about this, but anytime you're increasing continental weathering, you are sequestering carbon from the atmosphere. The mechanism behind continental weathering, the chemical breakdown of rocks on land, involves sequestering carbon from the atmosphere in the form of typically carbonic acid, CO2 reacts with water in the atmosphere, acid rain comes down, it chemically reacts with and weathers rocks, and that is the carbon sequestration pathway. And then, you know, those ions get transported to an aquatic basin of some sort and might get redeposited as carbon-containing rocks. So you're sequestering carbon to the hydrosphere and then potentially in the long term, 
the geosphere. But the point is here, enhanced weathering rates would have sequestered carbon from the atmosphere, which kind of negated the emission of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that was caused by the volcanism in the first place. In fact, the weathering feedback that the volcanoes caused may have even outweighed the carbon dioxide emissions, causing potentially a cooling period actually leading up to the KPG boundary. So the reason that volcanism causes an increase in weathering, especially this type of basaltic large igneous province volcanism, is because these basalts that are being released, you know, as lava and cooling um, at the surface in this huge region of India at the time are very weatherable rocks. So this particular type of volcanism at the scale that it was, was increasing weathering to the extent that the warming caused by volcanism probably was balanced out by weathering and even potentially caused a global cooling event. We actually see this potential cooling event here in this graph where we have the record of oxygen isotopes leading up to the KPG boundary. So yeah, it potentially makes sense. <laughs> and it was actually right after the increase or first pulse of volcanism in the Deacon Traps based on the osmium isotopes. It was in this stable period during which all of the basalt that had been erupted was weathering and causing cooling. All the data taken together indicate that the extinctions at the KPG boundary were likely driven by the rapid climate changes that resulted from some combination of asteroid impact and volcanism, but likely mainly the impact. So the full series of events across this KPG boundary were one, Deacon volcanism likely did cause an initial warming phase around 300,000 years before the KPG boundary, followed by a cooling trend due to increased weathering rates leading right up to the KPG impact. Significantly though, the absence of a consistent mercury signal in the deep ocean suggests that the direct volcanic impact on ecosystems was minimal compared to the impact. The impact then caused a series of rapid climate changes like we went over in part one, the extreme heating immediately during and right after impact, then impact winter and blocked sunlight and lack of photosynthesis and all of that stuff for a few months to years following the impact. And then finally, for a few hundreds of thousands of years following impact, there was a slightly longer term yet still rapid on geologic time global warming trend. Overall, the cause of the extinctions is clear, rapid climate and environmental changes. But the relative contribution of impact to volcanism still remains debated, but I think it's clear that the volcanic induced climate changes leading up to the impact, the both warming and cooling trend, rapid change of any sort can be harmful to ecosystems. I think it's pretty likely that those rapid changes leading up to the impact caused by the Deacon Traps volcanism likely stressed ecosystems enough to make them potentially decline and become more vulnerable during and right after the impact. So like any good scientific study, the unanimous conclusion is that more research is required. But this study has really increased our understanding of the potential role that the Deacon Traps volcanism played in this mass extinction event. And these kinds of studies really help us better understand the potential impact and projections in both short and long term of our modern climate change trend and what factors contribute to it, as well as the extinctions associated with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. The paper reference in this video is linked in the description box below. And if you want to check out part one, if you haven't done so, I'll link it somewhere on the screen here for you guys. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.